Will you do me the honor and be my new CPU? But, but, but can I at least benchmark you? Okay, great, let's go then. Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Sorry for that lame intro joke, but bear with me, cause today I have something special on the menu. And yes, it's the Intel's brand new Core i7-6950X, the 10-core 20-threaded beast coming from their new Broadwell eCPU lineup, meant for the ongoing X99 chipset-based motherboards. This is one of their successors to the more enthusiast level oriented Haswell E lineup of CPUs, where the strongest model had 8 cores and 16 threads, and which I personally, as some of you may know, use it for my testbed, the Core i7-5960X. Upon shrinking the manufacturing process from 22 to 14 nanometers, Intel now managed to cram in two more physical cores, making the new Core i7-6950X a CPU with highest core count in regards of consumer oriented CPUs for enthusiasts. When it comes to the micro-architecture of the new Broadwell E CPUs, you won't see any eye-opening difference compared to the last generation. Here we have the well-known 3D Trigate transistor technology, while for the more noticeable difference you'll see a bump in L3 cache size due to higher core count, so it went up to a total of 25 megabytes. The core clock frequency for the Core i7-6950X also remained the same with 3.0 GHz and 3.5 GHz for the turbo boost frequency, while the same goes for the TDP which is still at 100 40 watts. As you can see here, the CPU lineup for the Broadwell E has gone through a slight change in a way that the Core i7-6950X is the strongest Q in this lineup, while the 8-core 16-thread counterpart, the Core i7-6900K, found its place right behind it. Moving further, you can also notice that we have two more CPU models, the Core i7-6850K and the Core i7-6800K. Although they have the same core count, 6 cores, 12 threads, they differ in working frequencies, but most importantly, the Core i7-6850K k has a smaller amount of PCI Express lanes available, 28 versus 40, just like its predecessor, the Core i7-5820K, which had the same correlation with the Core i7-5930K. So basically now we have one more model to choose from for the Broadwell E lineup compared to the Haswell E, which had three models in line, but unfortunately as you can see here the pricing is quite different, whereas the strongest model in the lineup didn't receive its usual price of $1000. That price is now reserved for the second in line, the aforementioned 8-core Core i7-6900K, while the Core i7-6950X received a rather hefty price bump to over $1700, which is not something we were used to see. The $1000 mark was set a long time ago, basically all the way to the start of the Intel's enthusiast platform with the X38 and X48 chipsets, or a bit newer X58 chipset and its Core i7-975 Extreme Edition CPU model, and later on the first 6-core CPU, the Golftown Core i7-980X. For now we can only guess upon this sudden price change, is Intel trying to make some extra cash just because, or the yields are really low. Personally, I think that the yield theory is more likely, but bottom line, I don't think that users will be happy about this change either way. As you can see here, the new Core i7-6950X has a different heat spreader than the Core i7-5820K, which I have here as an example. The middle portion of it has this widened flaps, which makes handling CPU much easier around the socket, and the heat spreader overall takes a larger surface and has a bit of a different design, while the PCB is also somewhat thinner. As reported and as expected, the supporting platform for the new Broadwell eCPUs still remains the X99 chipset based 2011 V3 socket motherboards. The only thing you'll have to make sure is to have the newest version of BIOS on them. On the other hand, motherboard manufacturers just recently started to introduce so to speak refreshed and some completely new models of X99 motherboards, which directly bring in the Broadwell eCPU support out of the box and which also implement some of the new third party features and technologies which since then came along like the USB 3.1 and USB Type-C support, Thunderbolt 3 and so on. Putting that aside, in my case I use the Asus X99A model with the latest available BIOS at the moment, together in combination with 4 sticks of 4GB 2400MHz Ripjust 4 DDR4 RAM from G-Skill for a quad-channel memory configuration. On top of the CPU I've put the Fractal Designs Kelvin S24 so I can have everything under control cooling-wise. 
finally turning that on and taking a look at the benchmarking results, first thing I did of course is to run the Cinebench CPU render benchmark. This is probably the most well known benchmarking software when it comes to CPU benchmarking and cross comparison in regards of the other CPUs on the market. Here you can right away witness that sheer power of the Core i7-6950X 10 core count where it easily and quickly achieves over 1700 points. Continuing on with other CPU oriented benchmarks, you can see that the 6950X keeps on pulling ahead score wise compared to the 5960X and the 5820K, especially if it's a well optimized multi threaded software in question. There is no doubt about it that when it comes to raw performance, this will be and it is the new Intel's king of the enthusiast level flagship CPUs. I didn't get into any gaming benchmarks since it's more than obvious that the core count wise, the 6950 the X can easily tackle any game, although it probably falls behind a bit on the IPC performance and core clock frequency compared to the Skylake Core i7-6700K for example, but that can easily be compensated with some overclocking. Speaking of overclocking with Broadwell eCPUs, Intel introduced us with per clock overclocking settings alongside of the AVX ratio offset and VCCU voltage control. Unfortunately, I didn't have that much time to extensively play with those settings, plus this version of BIOS for this model of motherboards delivered some unusual behavior like really long pulse sequence and pretty big difference between the set core voltage and the actual core voltage, basically an overvolt of around 0.05 volts as you can see it here. Putting that aside, I've easily managed to get close to a stable 4.3 GHz at 1.210 volts or 1.264 volts to be more exact on the core voltage. That core voltage range from 1.2 to 1.3 volts should be the upper sweet spot since this is now a 14 nanometer skew and the higher voltage isn't that desirable when it comes to CPU longevity. I actually got close to 4.5 GHz combining different multipliers and base clocks but I was closing in at 1.3 volts while still being unstable under heavy your load. I'm hoping to explore this more with other models of Broadwell eCPUs or even the Core i7-6950X again, together with a bit more rock solid BIOS and motherboards. With this kind of overclock the performance really took off to another level since you're basically putting 10 cores at around 1.3 GHz higher core clock compared to the base 3.0 GHz. As you can see here Cinebench score jumped over 2000 points while the 3D Mark Firestrike physics score went about 20,000 points which is just bonkers. All in all Intel didn't disappoint in regards of the overclocking potential, with it you can easily get from 20 to 40% of that extra performance. Temperature wise, under the Fractal Scalvin S24 all-in-one water cooler, although it has 10 cores, under full load at stock values, the Core i7-6950X barely went over the 50 degrees Celsius at the times and under overclocking settings we were seeing temperatures from 60 to 75 degrees Celsius, which is still a pretty impressive number. Bottom line, in regards of the air coolers, I think you can expect pretty much the same performance as with the last generation of Haswell eCPUs, if not even better. Last but not the least, with the Broadwell eCPUs, Intel introduced us with the Turbo Boost 3 technology, which together with a combination of drivers and software, identifies the most potent core on the CPU die and directs her workload for even better single thread performance, and in that case it even surpasses the nominal value of the regular Turbo Boost clock frequency. That's it guys for this time, thank you once again for checking out this review of the Intel's latest Core i7-6950X CPU. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to our TechTik YouTube channel or you can just check out our other videos from before. And now excuse me, I have some persuasing to do.